I haven't really heard another person say that when they train, they kind of find out what to do to beat a specific person's game. Because I, I know I do that, and I feel like it kind of holds me back in competition sometimes. Because in the training room, I will just pick techniques that work against that person's game, and then the next guy I go to, I'll do different techniques. And they're not necessarily my best techniques, but I just know enough to like pick certain things that just work against certain people. But then I go to a competition, and I don't really know, and I have to resort back to just one style, usually lapel guard or something like that. How do you do that in training? Do you still use the, do you just adapt your knee cut to different people or do you actually change the style of passing you do or change the style of guard or you just kind of work it into this, your A game still so it works in competition and in training as you kind of figure out people's games? Yeah, you know, like uh, if, I'm, if I'm training for competition, I'm always trying to, you know, like uh, implement the game, the game that I'm going to do in the competition and then implement against anyone, you know, doesn't matter what that uh, they're going to put it. But you're right. If you actually find a way to beat this person on that game, the, on your A game, and you keep doing it over and over again, and then basically you get, you know, like a false sense that, oh, I'm going to win. Right. You know what I mean? And then maybe you're going to compete against someone that is not even as good as this person. But it's just different. It's just different. Yeah. And then you won't be able to, you know, like a, actually expose this yeah. weakness on the person. So what I do to actually deal with that, you know, like I kind of like, when I see like, okay, I already know if I do this with this person, I'm gonna, you know, like win the training. I only do that if I'm tired. You know, like if I get tired on the round, you know, like if I get like, a, you know, beat up, I'm like, I'm so tired. Then I'm go direct to the game, yeah. try to get the position that I'm gonna, I know that, okay, he's not gonna do nothing. You know? So I think the, the way that it kind of happens like that is because when you train, I'm assuming, because I kind of do this too, when I'm trying to get better, I'll intentionally go to the person's best area. So like if, like Zane, for instance, I would try and go to his game and so I can figure it out, you know? And then at a certain point, you do figure it out and then you go to their next best thing. You like start letting them set up their next best thing. So do you think, is that what you do in training? You kind of actively try and go to people's strengths? No, actually no. You know, like I should be doing that, you know, like uh, I have done that before, but I do that, but like uh, differently. Okay. You know, like, uh, I, I, you know, I kind of like first, like, I, you know, like first I do the A, my A game. Okay. Like I have to like at least like a take a little of energy of the person. Right, right. You know what I mean? I don't want to like go to something they good or give them something that they really good when they like fresh and then, you know, okay. tough, you know. Yeah. The reason why I do that because, you know, like one, I'm not comparing no more, right? Like I, I compete just like when I have like a little energy and then, okay, I'm going to compete. And then two, because, you know, like, uh, I want to do like, I don't want to go on the train and do like five top rounds. I want to go on the train and do like a 10. But to do 10 rounds, you know, to do more rounds, you actually, you need to spend less energy in rounds. You know, if I just go, I give the person the opportunity to work on the best positions, I'm going to be the one spending more energy, you know. Yeah. So I'll do that, but later on the round, you know, when they're not like, a, you know, like a, as fresh as in the beginning. I don't just go and then, okay, let me walk on this person. First, I make them uncomfortable. When I make them uncomfortable and then I see they're uncomfortable, then okay, now I give them a comfortable again. And then now I try to beat them, right. you know? But first I always, no, 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 let's make this. First, I wanna make the fight that I'm on the cruise control. Even yeah. though that you were in opposition, I'm controlling this too, yeah. you know? Then I do the test from that. I see. So you said something there that kind of made my ears perk up. You said you don't wanna waste energy. You don't want to waste energy on positions. How much of that, like efficiency of energy, like trying to save your own energy while trying to make them work harder, how much of that is built into your game? Maybe 90%. Most of it. Yeah. It okay. Maybe 90%, you know, like I feel that uh, my game is basically most of the time, you know, like uh, people give up the position because of the fact that most of the time I'm trying to make them spend more energy than I do it. Yeah. And so in your knee cut, what is it about the knee cut that makes them expend more energy? Is it that your knee is through in a specific way that makes them carry the weight more and you kind of just are able to just lean on them and they have to keep pushing? What is that? Now, if you, if you think about it, you know, like understand that, like, for example, you know, like the knee cut, it has to be good against any guard. That's the goal for the knee cut position. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like I did a little introduction and then I was explaining that it doesn't matter. Like, for example, like uh, you go to your house from here, right? You drive your car. So it's not one way that you can go home. You can go all the way to North Region and get your house, right. you know? So it's gonna, but you know, like on the end, as you're getting approach close and close, you know, like it's just one way to finish, right, you know, to right. get on the, the destination. Final street that you exactly. Okay. So, you know, like uh, I basically, 
people look on the big picture of like a gardening cut, pass the guard. I'm not looking to that. I'm looking actually, you know, like into to beat the person in these small battles. Like they, you know, like you mentioned one time that I even realized the grip fight, right, on mm -hmm. that show that I did 20 times. Yes, I'm doing. Right. I'm, I know what I'm doing. You know, I'm yeah. just not letting you comfortable having the grip. And then by that, I'm trying to improve the position, right? So by improve the position, you're constantly under pressure. You constantly spend energy mm -hmm. while that I'm like uh, not even putting full effort on the position. So once I get close to a position that I'm gonna attack you, you are way like maybe probably most of the time like 50% less energy of like just in defending these small battles that most of the people don't even notice because they're thinking about the knee cut and the position. And then I'm not even thinking about that yet. You know what I mean? I'm just thinking about Okay. A smaller battle. A small battle. Right. Yeah. So you're just taking it one step at a time rather than looking at the end, end zone. Yep. It's there and you know you'll get there, mm -hmm. but you got to deal with all the defenders yeah. first along the way. And then whatever you're doing to avoid them, you know, obviously is a, is a win-lose. You know, I can win and then I can lose. But if I win, I know that, you know, like it's close to the end. That's why if you look it up and then my mats, once I get that, it's basically 90% or more, it's end up by submission. Yeah. You know, because it's like, uh, well, you know, like uh, the job is done before. I have been tapping world champions that I don't even have to connect my hand fully. Yeah. Maybe That's like crazy. with 50% as my hand touch. And then I'm like, really? You're going to tap? Not even going to let me squeeze your neck, you know, because it was. So much was set up already. Yeah, the match was over. Before that. A minute even, before yeah. the pressure even came on. And then I, I can feel that. Yeah. I can feel that on training, I can feel that on the competition, you know? Yeah, it seems, I, when I have a successful move, it seems like it's rarely that many smaller setups to it. I think a lot of the lapel guard stuff I do, I mean, it's kind of the same idea, because it's like maybe like the grip switch is, is the same thing. Like I fight to get the grip switch, and then I fight to get the next grip switch, and each time it's like a little bit closer to, the, to home, like you said. But it seems like, because when, when you've taught me a little bit of the knee cup when I was training at your gym, and even with the choke as well. There were so many little details, like how you t were flaring your wrist, how deep you were putting your wrist, where you were putting your elbow, how you were like even positioning your shoulders, all was part of that. So how did you develop that over your career? Did, it, were you, did you have such a good knee cut from the beginning? Did you figure that out at Purple Belt or was it more when you got your black belt and then continued refining it? How much of it existed when you were really winning all your world championships? Well, you know, like uh, back in the day, we didn't, we didn't have the much much information that we have nowadays. So, you know, like it was not something I was actually trying to do everything. If you go back and then look in my previously, like a beginning of my black belt career, I, I was not really focused on going in cut. I used to do like a long step, Toriano, leg drag, you know, like, uh, but then it got in a point that I start to realize by watching guys that, you know, I need to be having something that threat people. Something that people know if I get that it's close to the end. So then I begin to really focus on putting myself and then find the position of getting to the knee cut. And then, you know, like I lost a lot of mats, you know, like on the beginning, like getting swept, you know, like uh, try to find a choke and then it's not there yet and then overcommit and then, you know, like I get on the ball and then not able to sweep the person. I think by training with so many different training partners and competing with uh, different ideas and then people would go and then, okay, now like at uh, one point I compete with Sean and he's doing the, you know, like uh, the diamond concept, like he's moving the head away, not letting me get the collar. And then I'm like, okay, so every single year that I compete and then I was applying the knee cut position or even the guard too, I just did one new thing, one new setup. Right. Next year I need one. It doesn't need to be crazy. On the end it's gonna be the same. But I need to implement one new thing for this special position that is stopping the, the, the knee cut, for example. Yeah. And then the guard is the same thing. And then that's the invisible thing that people talk about it because it looks exactly the same, yeah. but it's not the same. You know, like you have something that people don't, they can't see it. Only you know, you know, like, and then when you, you can explain, only feel it. Yeah, it's you can only feel things. it. It's yeah. like when it's, be, when it's done to you, it feels like it made the entire difference. But looking, it might have just been the slightest little shift in weight or position or something. Yeah, like, like when I see people doing knee cut, the one thing that I realized the first is like they are always up. You know what I mean? Because like sometimes you lose it. Too vertical. Yeah, like too vertical. Line, yeah. And then they going forward, you know. I sit back, but I pressure forward. 
Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, for example, you know, like the concept that you're on the close guard and then when you learn the close guard, you're here and then you're really like, okay, so you're going to get this stiff arm here. But if it's only your stiff arm against the bottom person, but the bottom person is a reverse mount, if you think about it, right? right? Yeah, yeah. So the person has a lot of leverage of like doing stuff. Like, for example, try to go with someone they know how to play close guard, put all the air from your arm here and try to hold the person down. Your arm is going to be like this yeah, all yeah. the time. Mm -hmm. So it's not here. You know, you have to be able to sit on the close guard and then the person try to break a post and then you have no hands and then they can't. Mm. It's the same thing on the knee cut. When I go to knee cut, I sit on the position, you know, like I engage my core, my core going wow. in, I can talk, you know, it's too yeah. hard. And then I'm there. And then you try to... And, and it's totally different. It changes the way it changes the whole way. Yeah, the completely. person, like, they try to move one time. They can't. Yeah. Like, for example, if I'm on the close guard, I go to, I try to move you. I see that you're going forward. I already know. Mm. I already, like, collect the data, right, put right. it in my head. I said, yeah. oh, he's going forward. He doesn't know how to stay there. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So it's the same thing. You know, like, if someone tried to do an in on me, I bump them, and they're going forward, I already know. Right. Every single time that I go forward, it's because I want to go forward. Mm. Because I'm posting my hand, I'm pointing my knee to that direction. I want to give the sense of the person to move me forward. But then if I want to like, oh, you're not going to move me one inch, then I stop the person. The person's like, oh man, these guys have a, such a solid base. And it's a way to change on the mind, the way they're going to approach things. Yeah. So over, like, like you're saying, you're collecting little pieces of data, like little changes. Someone finally gives you a little bit of resistance that slowed you down. You think about it, you adapt and do a new... Uh, angle of attack even slightly that even taught you to like learn how to use your core in that weird way which I've never heard of or even implemented and honestly when you said sit up straight for knee cut that's how I knee cut and it, it doesn't feel very good <laughs> I'm not a great knee cutter because <laughs> and that makes sense now I'll try to do something like that so that that's sort of like a, I heard a concept recently it's, it's called recursive self-improvement where it's like you try something until it, if it works it works and works until it doesn't work then you address that problem and then you do it all again. And it's just over and over and over again. How long do you think it took from like the start of that recursive self-improvement to now where you're, I mean, how, how long have you been competing at this point? Tw 20 years? Man, I've been competing in the black belt for 15 years. I think that that's at 15, 14 years. Yeah, so that whole time you've been on this recursive self-improvement loop, primarily for Nika and for your spider guard guard game. But I mean, there's a lot of other stuff that you play too. Like you, like you said, you play a lot of all these different styles and games. And I think that kind of is what separates guys like you who have this crazy longevity and you had immense talent in the beginning and you had the immense will to keep at it and keep training super hard and always show up and just like you were talking about that drive of like, it's almost like an overconfidence that leads you to move in that direction. So I think in, your, in these instructionals and like you did today, so much of that is consolidated and condensed. And it, that doesn't mean that it is not as useful as doing the whole 10 years. Like obviously, if, if they were somewhere to go and try and figure it all out over their own 10 years, not only would they not be successful at it because they don't have the talent that you went into it, but they wouldn't even arrive at the same conclusions. It would be a totally different 10 year transition to find a, a similar result maybe, but it'd be completely different. So I think it's really cool in jujitsu how every legend like yourself has such a unique style that no one else does and you see that like with leandro with you even with my lapel guards like it's something completely different even though sometimes it can look similar like the knee cut but your knee cut is so different than anyone else's knee cut and that's why for me i, I used to watch all of your spider guard stuff when i was a purple belt like you were one of my primary inspirations to like learn spider guard and a lot of my spider guard sweeps at, at purple belt I, I literally was from watching you fight Andre, that, that one particular one where you did that overhead sweep over and over and over again. That was a huge influence for me, but I didn't really pay attention to the knee cut side of things because I was just a guard player. I didn't even care to even look up those kind of matches. So I think it's really beneficial for anyone who wants to learn, especially for knee cut, because knee cut is such a broad application. Like you said, it works on almost any guard, and I can say firsthand it also works on lapel guard pretty effectively. <laughs> even though you say it does not, I definitely felt that it was doing a lot against lapel guard. So Tell, tell me a little bit why you think knee cut was the, the guard pass that you kind of arrived on and chose to be the thing that you recursively self-improved and it became this behemoth that people have to deal with. That if, if you even get it, it's almost a guaranteed submission. Well, you know, like uh, that's a very important question because then people can actually, you know, like uh, relate with me when they develop in the game, right? So even now that we have a lot of information, that's good, but that is also bad at the right. same time, right? 
why I'm saying that is because, yes, we have to learn everything in order to actually at least understand the mechanic of the move if you put on the move. But like, uh, for me, you know, like I saved an in-cut into my 30 as a black belt. Really? And nobody actually knew that. Everybody knew me by a guard player. So in 2009, people, everybody pulled me guard. Then I took nine off like, I choke a nine of, uh, I think, uh, 12 opponents on the world so championship. That was when you unleashed the knee cut for yeah. the first time. <laughs> so, like, uh, you know, like, they start to pull guard. And then all I was doing my mind was you like, ready. like, was oh, like no. okay, thank you. Yeah. You know, like, uh, and then I just save it for, like, uh, 2009 worlds, you know. For example, I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm holding this back, you know. Only people that train with me, they knew it, you know. Right. So everybody's like, oh, this guy's a guard player. And if you go back 2009 and 10, I played top like 90% of the time. And then why this is, because, you know, like when you, when you experiment something, you know, like uh, you're going to make a mistake, but you have to stick with the game plan, you know, until you actually know that. So like my first two moves, I have two moves in the in-card position. Hold the collar, hold the sleeve, pressure the person, pass the guard, or choke the person. That's the two moves that I begin to do it. From there, it was create every single thing that I begin to understand yeah. by, you know, and then the first person that actually opened my mind was Demi Maia because, you know, like uh, I compete against him and he swept me like five times in a match. You know, like uh, every single time that I go in an in-cut position, he would have an answer for the in-cut. Wow. And then the different answers. And then come up on the end of the same sweep. And then I was like, okay, here, you know, I didn't have the hand and he swept me. So then I go back home, I study the game, I think about it, you know, like and then I, he gave me, you know, he beat me, but he gave me so much more uh, you know, like uh, uh, feedback, what I have to improve. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think, uh, you know, like this was 2006, it was a huge jump on my career because now I'm like, okay, I have one move for the knee card position. And now I have, I don't even know. You know what I mean? I'm home I mean, you, you could you could break it down as, into as many pieces as you exactly. want. There's an infinite amount of yep. things you can do. So, and then again, you know, like in order to improve like that, the self-improvement that you talk yeah. about it, you know, like, uh, yeah, you know, like, uh, you come up with something, right? You come up with the lapella, which is complete stop the knee cut position. Then now I have to come up with something yeah. to go against the... Which is a good thing overall. Oh, it's a, it's yeah. amazing thing. If you don't have those things, then you just have like, I only have the two it moves that I have yeah. against, uh, uh, you know, like that I, you know, I mentioned. They used to be successful against couple guys. But the reason why I start to answer the question now, I look at my gym, I have like 200 people. There is only one guy that play half guard. One guy, only one guy. And half guard is the best guard against Nika? Or it's like no, it's like, you know, like, I'm like, why that's like every single one that Draculino say, my professor, is a Nika, uh, is a, a half guard specific train. Everybody's like, oh man, half. I'm like, wait a minute, nobody like half guard. Oh, okay. So, what about if I reach on people's half guard? On purpose. On purpose, purpose, force them to half guard. So then I look in all the gyms, only people from Nova Union used to know how to play half guard. And then it was the deep half guard. I'm like, I just need to learn how to stop the deep half guard. Then I pass everybody's guard if I get on the half guard. And then people would accept the half guard to recover half guard. And then it was like a problem like the half guard pass the half, you know, on the hook, I um, uh, had, had control. Or like the Marcelo Garcia one, switch the arm, isolate the arm, put the leg out. Yeah. That's it. And then, uh, you know, like every single time that I was getting people's half guard, they were desperate. So I keep first, I keep forcing people to get in the half guard. When I begin to get on the half guard, I begin to have more successful passing people's guard. So then I'm like, okay, which is the easy way to get on the half guard? Knee cut position. I just put my leg. The person has to somehow get a hold of my leg. Then I'm in the knee cut position. Like, for example, five grip, right? You know, like, uh, honestly, one day we're going to experiment. You're going to try to play no lapel game, and you're going to try to make any grip on me. Yeah. You know, like, uh, and then you see, like, but that's... It's nearly, if you don't use the lapella, I'm going to get that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's like, a, you know, like, that's why, I like, in my gym now, everybody's like, man, they, I force them to use the lapella or I force them to go to the half guard. Yeah. So I basically, it's a decision. Yeah. Like, a, when, I, when I used to train with people, they, everybody said, man, you just, like, make me play half guard. You know, like, it's like, just looking at training, you think that, man, why are you pulling home on the half guard? Like one time, Braulio uh, was watching it, and I was training with Otavio, and then he asked Otavio, man, why are you always on the half guard? You pulling? 
no, I'm not pulling him to the half guard. He's making me yeah. go to the half guard. I don't want to be here. Go train with him. <laughs> and then Bradley has a lapella, uh -huh. which is a good uh, way to stop for like a for the knee cut. But if you don't go to some somewhere from there, then the knee cut eventually Still. is gonna go there. You know, like especially the uh, spider lapella. You know that I, you know, eventually I learned many ways to get a a knee cut position from that situation. You have to really, and it has to be like you. If the person is not as good as you. You can't get that, and then I'm still gonna have an answer, you know. Mm -hmm. So, well, that's really interesting because I never, I've never thought about that before. Because it sounds like you actually built your game around a weakness you saw in the overall community, which I think still holds true to this day. No one wants yeah. to play half guard. It's like two guys. If you think about it, Who? like Bernardo and then Lucas Leite, uh, Lucas Leite, right. and then it's a different half guard. Yeah, true, true. None of them combine both. Yeah, yeah. Deep, and then the the twist the knee half guard that yeah. uh, Lucas Leitch he doesn't do deep half guard, yeah. Bernardo Faria doesn't do twist the knee. It seems like Lucas Leitch's half guard kind of just left with him. You don't see too many people really commit to it and really uh, make it work. And I think that's what's really cool about now, like now that you're you you filmed with us and it's on Jiu Jitsu X. If you ever wanted to add more like another knee cut thing, next time that you figure out how to deal with the lapel guard, for instance, like you find a lapel guard that's kind of stopping knee cut for a little bit, and then you discover the solution to it, like you could add it to the system now, and you could just continuously have this be like your true specialty. And that's what's so cool is that if you look at it, the people who are really legends in the sport become specialists. Like no one knows more about knee cut than you. No one knows more about Lucas Leitch half guard than Lucas. And no one knows more about that deep half than Bernardo. So it's, it's interesting how the people who are head and shoulders above everyone else in a position usually win the most as well and become world champions and become like this next level. You have to, you know, like uh, if you, if you know, like if you don't build a strength around your game, like for example, you have to be good overall, you know, like, but well round is not enough. Yeah. Well round is not enough to win. Yeah, yeah. You need a kill, killing shot. Yeah, like something that you exactly. You need to be like, with. yeah, this here, look, if I put, like, for example, you know, Hey, if I wrap this lapel yeah. around your leg. It feels like if I get reversed to the worm, I will win. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, like you have to build something in order to win. Like you said, you know, like we can go over, you know, like if you talk about, about guard pass, we can go over, you know, like, a, 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 like the ledges, everybody has something in common. You know, I can name every single one here is special. Like a Roger Gray, side smash mount. Mm -hmm. Bernardo Faria, one arm under, one arm over. Yeah. André Galvão, Tobo Anders. Yeah. Uh, Marcelo Garcia, the half guard to the other side, the hook in the hips, you know. Yeah. So everybody has... And, you, and usually they have one primary one and then one secondary exactly. specialty, top and bottom, mm -hmm. or top and standing, or guard and standing or something. It's usually only two. I, there's very few people that have three. Yeah, it's a, it, exactly. You know, like, and then, man. And then honestly, in a competition, as you go on points, like a being danger, be a submission guy, is not good. Like, for example, guys, like, I fought guys, they danger. I know what they're good at. I stop, and then I just overscore them, and then I end up tapping them. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's very important to be, you know, like, in a competition that we talk about, world championships, stuff like that. You know, like, when you build some strength like this, it's like, you know, like, that's why people ask me, like, you know, what's, what should be my goal? I'm like, my, your goal should be, like, develop a strength. You know, what's your strength? Like, if I ask, if I, when I go to the seminar, first thing that I ask the people, I, I get a couple questions. I'm like, what will be your position that you, you can put me and then you'll be like, man, it's close to the end. Right. If you don't have something like that, basically it will be impossible to you to go against someone that have a, a good guard. Yeah. What are you going to do? You're going to try like a 10 different things? Nothing's going to work. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like if you're forcing something, open up, you're going to open up all the, all the part of the game. Like for example, on the training, like the guys, they ask me lately, man, you're not doing any cut. I'm like, yeah, because you're giving me like a, a stack position, or you give me a side smash, you know. So in order to to stop the side smash, then now you need to give me a knee cut, mm -hmm. you know. So like the game is built off my strength. So when you build your strength, so then the whole game is gonna build up around that, you know. Like I think that make very easy to you kind of like understand jujitsu, you know what I mean? Like for example, if I wanna pick your brain on the lapella. I want to pick your brain like, okay, so how many options you have when you got here, right? right? So you have thousand, but I'm like, how can I get here in a different situations? Mm -hmm. Like at the knee cut, for example, today we film like a, 
pretty much like a get into the half guard, like a De La Riva, reverse De La Riva, sit up guard, games that go directly to the knee cut. What about close guard? Right. What about lapella guard? What about spider guard? What about, you know, like there is a lot of guards that you're not exactly in the knee cut position. Right. How do you deal with that? You know, so those strengths has to be built over those things, you know, like uh, that's why it's an endless process of techniques, you know. Yeah. So you can do like uh, probably like uh, 30 more DVDs of La Pella Guard because, you know, like I can just bring something on the table that the La Pella Guard doesn't work and then you have to develop a complete. Yeah, you just need a new move. New move, you know. Yeah, it's just, it's like this weird technique stack that is formed and it's like t the further jiu-jitsu is going to progress the more and more steps you need to have answers for to get to the final solution of the submission essentially yeah. and I, I, it, it's almost like we're forced into a particular realm of expertise for that reason because if you do if you are a generalist like you were saying like you, you're kind of good from everywhere you're not going to know the stack that you have to proceed you, you do this they do this you do this they do this you do this you do this cross choke you know you can only build that stack in a, a few certain areas so I, I think it's like I know I'm going to be watching this instructional for sure because I really wanted to improve my knee cut because for me my passing kind of is like Toriando maybe is my good pass maybe it's like a little bit of a long step as well but I feel like I don't really have a pass that is death like if I get it maybe my Toriando kind of but not really maybe a little bit of like my lapel passing but even still it doesn't feel super dangerous to me um, I've definitely more, been more of like a generalized passer, whereas from guard, that is not the case. It's like I know exactly what I want. And so I, I see in myself, I have a lot of improvement in that area. And I think the best way to do that, like I'm not going to spend the next five years trying to figure out knee cut on my own. I'm going to watch your instructional and just like start there. It's like I can skip three, three and a half years, four years of the discovery process because I can just take it from the man himself who literally spent 17 years yeah. figuring it out. Yeah, that's 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 a good thing, you know, like the information that, that we have, like uh, today, you know, that helps so much, you know, like uh, I had to lose a lot right. in order to develop that, yeah. you know, like, and then, but like I said, you know, like uh, you develop and then you know, you know, like uh, like I was talking before, it's, it's nearly almost no position that I'm not comfortable, you know, like uh, it's, it can be like I'm escaping a, in a sweep, in a tempo sweep and then being on an in cut. It's also one of my favorite, you know, like, oh, you almost sweep me, almost sweep me. Knee cut, you know, so it's like, oh, like, you have the sense that you have the control and you make the control, knee cut, you know, because if you train jiu-jitsu and you understand, you know, like, reaction, overreaction, right? So I do something, you react, mm -hmm. right? So, like, every single time that you create a reaction that stops something that I'm trying to do, you have to accomplish something big mm -hmm. because if you don't accomplish the way back is going to be worse. Right. You know what I mean? It's like a little push, but then exactly. you take more. So, like, that's why, like, for example, when I train jiu-jitsu, when I go to the competition, and sometimes I get frustrated, and then I lost a little bit of the, the law. I lost a big, a big time of, about competing is because the fact that it's a game. It's basically people shutting people's game out. And then I understand that. And then you can actually, you know, like, develop something to actually be cool. You know, like when I, why I like people like, man, you love training. Yes, I love to train because I'm constantly experimenting. You know what I mean? Like my own moves, you know, like it's not like I'm doing big different things, you know. Yeah. But like, okay, if the move doesn't work here, what's next? You know, what can I do? So like when you go in a competition, it's basically, they trying to avoid most of the things, you know, like it's, it's very rare someone they're going to go and then, okay, let me exchange with just this guy here and see what's going to happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's see if I can actually beat this guy. You know, like, no, 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 like a, it's, it's very rare, you know, like I love to go in a competition somebody, I'm going to try to tap you, you're going to try to tap me. Not like a submission only, but like we're throwing the jiu-jitsu and then we see who is better, you know what I mean? We sweep, I sweep you, we try to pass my guard, try to pass your guard. Oh, I sweep you, now let me hold back here because I don't want to go to your guard. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I want to circle back to something you said earlier too where you, you talk about how much information is available now and how that, that's a, both a good thing and a bad thing. And I would say it's a bad thing because just like we said, it's sort of a, a chain of moves that if you don't learn them in the right order, you're not gonna be able to execute 
the whole thing properly. So with YouTube and free videos on Instagram and people just scroll and one thing's an inside Senkaku spinning 50-50 heel hook thing. And then the next video is a lapel guard, squid guard, umaplata. And then the next video is a rolling darts or ninja roll. It's like you're picking and choosing all these random different chain links and trying to put that together into a cohesive understanding of jujitsu. That's not gonna work. Yeah. It's, it, it doesn't work, but that's how most people think they're gonna work. Yeah, they think that it's gonna work, but then, and it even feels more fun maybe to yeah. like be like, oh, I'm gonna see what this today, oh, I'm gonna pick this today. But if you're actually trying to improve, you need to do it in the sequence that the yeah. guy who figured it out yeah. shows it. You know, like, uh, I don't believe that you'll be able to be good in anything by picking yeah. stuff. Like you said, you know, it's good, but it's at the same time bad because yeah. anybody can just put his stuff up there, right? Yeah. And then if you like looking for those type of stuff, and then you like you look in the short term, right? Yeah, you're not looking in the long term. Yeah. So we're talking about you know like uh, you being developed a pelican pretty much like uh, since you got your black belt. Yeah, seven years. You I've know been like a, on. it's like seven Eight years, years yeah. and then you still develop and then have more answers. I've been doing knee cut for like uh, almost like 15 years, I would say. Yeah. You know what I mean? Still so much stuff to do it. So I never tried to pick stuff up, you know, like uh, but. You know, like, uh, yeah, like you said, I want to kind of like develop something that you can go through the system and then kind of like a begin to understand, you know, like, uh, you, you, like, for example, what about like, if you know one sweep from the, from the warm guard, what about what, the other answers? What about if the person like a defender sweep? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it's actually a good example because the first thing that I actually, the first technique that I learned in Jiu-Jitsu, I tried to learn like this. You know, like if that was like a, my spider guard, Tom Nagy sweep, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, my professor, Chichi, he won the world championship sweeping everybody on that position. I was a blue belt. And I asked him, I want to learn. So then I learned the move. But basically, it was a two edge advance for me. And then I have no answer whatsoever if I cannot hit the move. Right. You know what I mean? So I would go. Maybe three fights I hit the move. But then now everybody knows what I want. Yeah. So once break on the grip, okay, now what I do, I'm just waiting the person to push them off and then bunch press and then try to escape and then, you know. So... It's very, very important to people actually, as you look to something, you invest in yourself and then you develop something that actually it's gonna, you know, pay off, pay in off a lot over of time. different situations, and, not and, just once. And then again, you know, like tell me one thing that you build that is stronger in the short term. If you tell me one thing, then, you know, that is nothing. Yeah. Not even stocks. Right. Yeah, <laughs> true. I mean, everything is better on the long end. Exactly. Yeah, it's like, gotta, Long it builds term, over time. Builds and the, over time. the only way to build something over time is to start at the foundation, the yeah. beginning. And mm -hmm. I think our, our culture it, with social media and modern technology is the culture is, is to do the opposite of that. Quick, I, I just want it now. I want it fast. I want the move I can do tonight at training. <laughs> and then if it doesn't work, I'm going on to the next move because there's literally a million plus m more infinite amount of jujitsu moves that you can try. So I, what I think is kind of cool about this project with Jujitsu X and why I wanted to work with you specifically is because one for myself, I want to be able to pick a game that I can actually learn from the beginning to the end, but maybe I don't just want to learn knee cut. Maybe I want to learn like something from Victor Hugo too, like his sort of flowing large guy thing. I'm like a tall guy, but I'm not, I can be fluid, but when I train with Victor, it feels different and he has something different to give. So like maybe I can start kind of building my game long-term. I could be like, well, I want Hamala's knee cut. I want Victor's 50-50. I want Andres's umaplatas. And I can kind of piece together these different instructionals from these different people who are li literally experts not just random guys on YouTube who are teaching jujitsu. Like I know jujitsu, I learned it on YouTube too, and I'm <laughs> gonna teach it now, because that's kind of what happens. Yeah. There needs to be like an actual expert teaching you this stuff. Because if you're not learning from an expert, it's like you're trying to learn how to do surgery from some guy who looked it up on Wikipedia. It's not the same. Yeah. You need to, this is very complex stuff. Like there's a reason it takes 10 years to get your black belt. In. And then even if you just spent 10 years to get your black belt, that doesn't mean that you're actually really good. There's something different. And I think the difference is how guys like you think about it. Like actually, oh, there's a weakness. I can exploit this and I can focus on this because other people aren't focusing on it. And it's almost like finding a pathway where there's little resistance and really taking that all the way home to the end. Way before, like to this day, people don't have an answer for the knee cut really. Yeah. Maybe by accident, a little bit lapel guard, like you said, but that wasn't focused. It just happened eventually. And then, you know, like a good thing, you know, like uh, I always also, you know, like uh, I try to implement something that people don't do it. You know, if you think about 
an e-cut, you know, the ways that I do it, you know, like I was explaining to you, it's like, it's basically, I always give the person a sense that he has something. Maybe an underhook, maybe a lapella hold under my leg, you know, like maybe pummeling the hand on the cross face right. hand. You know, like I'm not like a really focused on stop everything that the person has. Yeah. And then that goes same thing on the top, you know. So like it's a, it's a kind of like an orthodox way to think about it, you know, because always the way like I shut everything down. No, no, no. Let's give a little hope. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like you have this. Right. You but, know what I mean? But you've probably spent time in that situation. Exactly. You know exactly what to do. Yeah. <laughs> and they think, oh, I have a little bit of resistance exactly. here. I'm going to hold on to that. So yeah. then, you know, like a, that's like what you build, you know, like the confidence that you build over time, you know, like basically, you know, like, why, why this guy's putting you like you, the, the breakdown? Why this guy's putting the foot on the half guard? That's the reason for that. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want the point. I wanted the choke. And then right. the choke, I wanted the angle when my foot yeah. is on the half guard. That threw me for a <laughs> loop when I was trying to figure it out. I think the only reason I knew was because I had trained with you and felt the difference between the passing version and the submission version. But I don't think most people would see the difference. Yeah, they, they still but don't you know. had a totally different goal. Yeah. It's like one is the passing grips, one is the submission grips, yeah. but they react in the same way to both, just instinctively. Yep. That's incredibly <laughs> powerful, man. Well, thank you so much for coming down and thank working Thank you, with thank us. you, Kim. We hope all. to have you back for Spider Guard. Yeah, it's, it's too like a some more, like a lot of more than you caught you. Yeah, well, that's and, the great thing about Spider Guard too, you know. Well, now that uh, you're on Jiu-Jitsu X, you can come back and update the program. So anyone who gets your knee cut program will have access to any future updates you want to add to it, which is, would just be pure for the sake of Jiu-Jitsu, <laughs> essentially. So every, every time we do that, we could potentially put it on sale again or get people to come back to it to learn the next moves, which is important because I talk a lot about the meta in Jiu-Jitsu, which is just a term that kind of articulates like how jujitsu changes over time, like the different techniques that you need to learn. That changes a lot. And if you're doing the moves from five years ago, today, you're gonna to be facing a lot of those stacked counter solutions that you were not aware of. And I think that's kind of what happened with the lapel guard in the beginning. It's just like, well, what the fuck is this? This is totally new. No one knew what to do. But that every move does that over time. Every move evolves yeah. over time. And knee cut is no different. And in fact, I think knee cut probably evolved a lot more just because you were the one guy who really made it his mission to fill out all of the potentials of what it could be. And here we are to talk. Yeah, and then, you know, like you said, you know, like, Adela, then this is all the game, you know, that was knee cut like a spider guard from one position. Yeah. I had the one position. Yeah. I nearly can go spider guard for any guard. Yeah. I can go spider guard to half guard if I wanted. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So like, but I'll begin one move, then you stop the move. It's so crazy. Then I have to create something new. I feel like that's the real beauty of jujitsu because it's so hard to visualize how all these techniques connect. And really, the only way to let people actually see is to film it and put it in order, or maybe have a flow chart or something. But if you were to somehow be able to actually imagine all of the jujitsu techniques and how they connect, it's not a line. It's not a stack. It's like a circle. Yeah. It's just an infinite circle yeah. spiraling into infinity where everything connects to everything in every different angle. And you kind of, but we're just humans. We can't, <laughs> we can't know it all. So you just pick one sliver and try and understand that and then pick another sliver and try and understand that. Well, it was super great to have you, Hamla. Thank I'm, you, I'm thank you, Ken. Thank you, guys, you know. This project is going to be really nice. I'm excited to be part of it. Great, we'll see you thank next you. time. Thank, thank you, guys. Nice. <laughs>